Well, your top story, metals in full meltdown mode. Gold down more than 26% this year. By the way, it's on track for its worst quarter on record. Silver, even worse, down a whopping 39% year to date. Peter Schiff, CEO of Europe Pacific Capital, is here. So is Mike Vogelzang, president of Boston Advisors. Uh, Peter, I guess my take is not why gold has collapsed off its highs. I guess my take is should gold have ever been 19 bucks an ounce in the first place? What's your take? Well, I, I think so. I think it's headed higher. I think that what's happening right now is you have a lot of speculative pressure on the gold market. You have speculative longs who have been getting out. You have speculative shorts that are getting in. But I think everybody is operating under a false narrative, and so gold is being mispriced. The U.S. economy is not recovering. We are entering back into a recession. We might be in recession by the end of this year. How can you uh, say the housing not market, recovering? Housing Look at prices the data aren't. Let, let me finish. No, housing prices aren't going to keep rising. They're about to roll over and make new post-bubble lows. The Fed is not about to tighten. They're going to ease. They're going to do even more QE, not less. I think when the market figures this out, there's going to be a sharp reversal in the price of gold. And I think the people who are selling it now are going to have a big problem trying to buy it back. Okay. Well, Mike, to Brian's earlier point, to what extent do you feel that gold would become over-owned after all the meltdown of 2008? And basically what we're seeing now is an unwind of all of that. Yeah, that's pretty much straightforward, I think, right? I mean, look, investors, we know human behavior drives, drives most of investing. We know people buy stuff when it's going up. And, and so look, look, at the, look at the bubble period. The, the enormous amount of flows into the, into the now easily available way to purchase gold, the ETFs that are available. Massive amounts of flows going into those in the, in, during the middle of the 2000s. When equities were going nowhere, people were buying gold because it was going up. Why are they selling it now? Because it's going down. To Peter's point, right? You've got you've got new shorts coming into this thing every day. It's a, it's a clearly a favorite of, of hedge funds to be to be punishing the punishing gold. I'm not quite as negative on the economy and, and the outlook uh, as he is, but um, you know we do think that gold's getting a little bit of speculative oversold here. But it's you know the problem with this is when you're talking about behavior and you're talking about people chasing prices. Where's the bottom? It's really hard to say. Well, where is the bottom, Peter? I mean, how, how much do you have to go well, on you know, until you we have get to, to realize the bottom and a real reason to get yeah. back in? Yeah, well, we know at $1,200, the majority of gold mines can't even mine it profitably. So gold is now trading for less than the cost of producing it. And, of course, in order to produce it, you have to own a gold mine, which is very hard to do. So the price of gold can't stay down here uh, for a long period of time because then the gold mining companies will shut down and there will be no supply. I, I, I push back. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly. Hmm? I push back a little Go bit ahead. on that, Peter. I've heard that 1200 bucks thrown around. And, listen, I get it. But what I don't understand is then why did any gold miner produce any gold at all before gold hit 1,200 bucks an ounce, and they did. So the price of gold production is because either gone way up, which we means it can go down again, yeah. or that number is not true. Well, no, remember. There's been a lot of inflation that the government wasn't, doesn't want to acknowledge, but you can see it in the cost of mining. Meanwhile, look at crude oil prices. They're still at $95 a barrel. I mean, so if you look at the gold-oil relationship, gold is extremely cheap relative to oil. So uh, the, the cost of mining has gone way up. I don't even think the price of gold has kept up with it because there's so much more inflation in the pipeline than is generally perceived. You but, you know, again, there's an expression, I guess, in poker, don't, you know, don't count your chips while you're still sitting at the table. I think a lot of these gold shorts that think they're making a lot of money, let's see how much money they've made when they actually cover. Because I think when, 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 when the traders figure out the true predicament that we're in and that the Fed is in and how much more money is going to be printed, I think gold could rise even faster than it fell. I mean, we've heard the inflation argument many, many times. I mean, for example, another big commodity investor, Jim Rogers, has said that we're going to get a wall of inflation because of all the central bank money printing. We just haven't had it yet. Don't you think that maybe, Mike, the inflation argument for gold is getting old? Well, no, it's we've clearly had old. It's part of the reason why gold is so, Mike, Mike part of, first, then Peter, you can get a word in. It's, it's part of the reason why gold went up, right? It is the anticipation, of, anticipation of, of inflation that, frankly, isn't coming and hasn't come and probably won't come. Right, the, the, at least not for not for the foreseeable investable future. The, the 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 unemployment, the job problem is going to continue to create downward pressure on prices around the globe. This is this is a this is a 1970s argument that's not valid in today's world. That's why interest rates are still at secular lows, even though they're up from their lows, they're, they're very low levels. 
this is gold gold does well in a negative interest rate environment interest rates are clearly turning slightly more positive it's another reason why gold's going down yeah, look the, the 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 big elephant in the room is the central governments that that, that own gold and and they can mm. jerk this thing around any way they want so uh, it was it is it beyond reason to think that that they're manipulating the price of gold to keep people into the equity markets wouldn't surprise me a bit really it wouldn't because you know listen those things are going around Mike. people are talking about it or central banks manipulating the price you've got some of these conspiracy blogs that are always throwing this stuff up how about the fact that it's just darn easy to sell gold these days because it's not just a wheelbarrow and a safety deposit box well look it's a I, I piece of paper I, I no idea. Idea. Yeah. transaction but why why would it why would it surprise you that they manipulate the price of gold when they clearly manipulate the price of the bond market every day right i mean it's not it, it doesn't take a huge leap of logic to say that and again i'm not i'm not a conspiracy theorist i'm not a gold bug i don't i don't have any particular yeah. uh, you know dog in this fight here but the the point is that it that that they are the largest owners of gold on the planet collectively and if they want if they decide that they want the price of gold to go down because it's gotten too expensive for whatever reason they want to chase people into the equity markets as they've been doing with fixed income they can it's not that complicated so well, for us to be sitting here arguing about why the price of gold is going down is reasonable yeah Peter. because it, 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 inflation is, by definition, an increase in the supply of money and credit. That's what the central banks are doing. They are inflating. They are creating inflation. And the, you, you're not seeing falling consumer prices. People might want to talk about it, but actually speak to people who shop, who actually go to stores. The prices for the things that we buy are going up. Now, maybe real estate prices would be true. going down That's or stock prices true. would be going down. No, it is true. It, it, you know, I talk to when, people every day. I've got a radio show. Television. People are calling me up. Excuse me. When was the last time you bought a more expensive Prices? television? Well, I don't buy television uh, sets I mean, every day. But I tell you, the television sets that people buy, you know, they don't last as long as they used to. But it's not the television sets. The, that, that's, that's technology that's bringing prices down. Television sets would be even cheaper if the government wasn't printing all this money. Okay. That doesn't mean there's no inflation. Fair, fair enough. But the Guys. cost of living is going up. But it is going to skyrocket. But you can't wait until inflation is running out of control, until it's 40, 50, 100 percent a year, to do something about it. You know, when Nixon imposed wage and price controls, which I think was wrong, the CPI was going at 4% a year. If we measured inflation today the way it was done when Nixon was president, it's more than 4%. May, may, that's, maybe, that, guys, and I don't want to get into some wonky inflation argument for that. We need to bring in Steve Leishman, and nobody wants to do that. Mike, I've got a quick question Amen. for you, though, before we wrap it up, which sure. is this. Whatever the reason gold is being sold, we know it's being sold. People are pulling in cash. Bonds are being sold. People are pulling in cash. Where is that money going? Well, a lot of the money well, isn't going anywhere. Because because Mike, a lot Mike, of people, go ahead, Mike. It, it, it's just oh. asset, asset. Part of the part of the money is staying in cash, right? We're we're at an unsettled time. People are trying to find places that are going to be that are going to be stable. I do think that equity prices are going to continue. Equities are going to continue to see inflows because they've been going up. It's really it's really about that that simple. Um, you know, we've seen we've seen global equity prices fall substantially, particularly emerging markets. But I, I do think that U.S. equity prices are still going to get supported here, uh, as we're seeing yesterday and again today. So I, I do think some of the money's leaking into the equity markets. I think it's also leaking into real estate. Um, over the last, well, we know what prices have done over the last year in real estate in general, both both uh, both housing and also commercial real estate. So, you know, part of that part of that's where it's going. Um, I, I think everybody makes a different decision, but we know it's out of gold. Peter, very quickly, bottom line here is gold has been going down and you've been continuing to say bye, bye, bye. Have, have any of your clients or anybody actually called you up and, like, you know, blasted you for this and said, you know, you've been making. Well, you know, again, been I've been saying, I've been, been telling my money? clients to. Yeah, look, I've been telling my clients to buy gold since it was under 300. I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball on the corrections, but I think uh, it's the clients of the brokers who have been telling their, their clients not to buy gold since it was under 300. You know, they're the stop clocks. You get a correction, and now they come out yep. and say, you see, we were right. The price of it's, uh, This is not the end of the bull market on gold. So when gold makes a new high, uh, I'd like to see you guys bring out all the naysayers and ask them we what they're telling their clients who they told not to buy gold. We, we, we certainly will. And listen, Peter, it's a good point that if you bought before 2010, you're still in the money, right? I mean, gold, gold wasn't here until two years ago. Peter and Mike, it was a good discussion, guys. Thank you both very much.